come to the rink and try and win championships, and that's what it's all about. When you look from the outside and you watch this team, they, I know we're going to have a good, real good, solid hockey team this year. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Rangers. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host right here, Eric Wilson. Today, we want to have a little bit of a discussion about Jacob Truba. Now, the New York Rangers nominated and elected Jacob Truba as their team captain for this 2022-23 to season. Now, this is the first time in a long time that the Rangers have had a team captain. In the past, they've gone with six alternate captains, had a bunch of people kind of mix in and be kind of like a like a captain force, basically, just like a little group of captains. But now they're going with the one true captain who's supposed to be the leader of the team. They selected Jacob Truba, and we kind of want to discuss, you know, we're a bit over a quarter of the way through the 2022-23 to season. Does this look like it was the right choice for the New York Rangers captain uh, in Jacob Truba, or should the Rangers maybe have gone with someone else? And what has the impact of Jacob Truba been on the team so far this year? But before we dive into all that good stuff, how are you doing today, Eric? Honestly, I don't even know how I'm feeling. I just woke up like 20 minutes ago and I'm just still, you know, trying to gather my brain cells back into action. But, you know, I guess pretty good overall. Well, get those brain cells in order and let's discuss Jacob Truba and the New York Rangers. Jacob Truba being the guy who's supposed to get everyone else's brain cells in order, line them up and get them playing right on uh, hockey nights. But so far, the Rangers not having the best year. It's been a real struggle, especially in recent weeks. Another loss last night in overtime and another game coming up today. And I don't even feel confident that they're going to win it, even though they're facing Chicago, who's not very good. So, all right, Eric, Jacob Truba, how has he been playing in your eyes? Before we dive into his captaincy and what we think about his leadership capabilities and all that, and I, I want to get it away. I think he's a great leader, but let's talk about how he's been as a player so far this year. This season, Jacob Truba hasn't been that good and you know ever since we traded for him he's all honestly not been that good we signed him to a pretty long expensive contract expecting him to kind of be like the backbone of our defense but now that honor i guess has kind of been put on adam fox which adam fox is doing great i have no complaints about him but now we have this guy on the team jacob truba paying him all this money have him extended for a couple more years and he really just hasn't been that good especially this season he hasn't scored a single goal yet um, as, lo- as well as most of our defense out of the six defensive guys we have, I think only three of them have goals. Pretty sure I think the defense has scored a total of 10 goals this season, six of them coming from Adam Fox. So most of the defense, especially Jacob Truba, is really lacking offensively. Looking here, he only has six assists for six points in 25 games played, and he's a minus eight. So he's kind of a defensive liability. Every time off he's on the ice, he's making poor decisions. He's making turnovers. And I know last night's game against Ottawa, it was a bad play started by him. We were watching it. I said, Jacob Truba's on the ice. This isn't going to be good. And then 30 seconds later, we lost. So, yeah, no, Jacob Truba has not played well. Yeah, so he really has not played well, as you just mentioned, all the stats there. And I think that the next part of this discussion that we need to dive into is how has his performance affected the rest of the team, right? Because when your leader, your captain is playing not at the best level, not playing the best hockey of his life. How does that affect the other guys around him? And what are, what are your thoughts on the guys like Keandre Miller, Adam Fox, the other defensemen on this team? And then, of course, looking at the forwards as well. Do you think that the lack of a good example being set from high performances out of Jacob Truba is affecting the rest of the guys on the squad? I think it's definitely affecting it, but I wouldn't say it's a huge effect because, you know, obviously every NHL player wants to be good and score points. But you don't elect a captain because of how good they are. If we did it like that, then Artemi Panarin or Igor would be the captain, even though you can't have goalie captains. But that's not the point. Um, what you really just look for in a captain is their leadership abilities. You look at previous Rangers captains. We had Ryan McDonough. He wasn't the best defenseman on the team, but we still gave it to him because he was a great leader. Ryan Callahan, definitely not the greatest forward we've ever had, but we still gave it to him. And it's just kind of stuff like that. So it's like, when your captain isn't playing well, it is a little disheartening, and I'm sure that affects your emotions while you're playing on the ice a lot. But it's not the biggest thing in the world because you still need to really rely on your top six forwards and your top defensive pairing and your goalie to really spark motivation to play better. Right. And so I, here's another layer that I want to add to this that I just thought of, and I think this is kind of an interesting thing to bring up here is, yeah, so this is our captain and Jacob Truba. He is the team's leader. But the Rangers recently traded another guy who was kind of a big leader for them, and that was Ryan Reeves. And Ryan Reeves requested that trade. He wasn't seeing the ice time that he wanted to. But do you feel like maybe, and I I know we haven't played too many games since he's been traded, but we've played a few, and we haven't necessarily done that well in those games. 
do you feel like not having Ryan Reeves out there to scream Shesty release us and, you know, providing his fist fights on the ice and everything like that, has that maybe affected the morale and the leadership capabilities of this team? I mean, yeah, I think definitely because even though Ryan Reeves wasn't the biggest offensive producer and the forward core that we had going on, he was definitely a morale booster. And, you know, I see all this stuff on Twitter and Instagram, fans going to panic mode. They're wanting to trade Kako, Lafreniere, get rid of this guy, get rid of that guy. That's not what we need whatsoever, you know. At a time like this where the Rangers are losing games, failing to close games that we should be winning, the last thing we need to do is get rid of someone and bring the morale morale down even more. Uh, you look at most of our offensive core, defensive core, they've been playing together for a really long time. Even off the ice, we got people living together. And it's more than just a hockey team. They're kind of like friends for life at this point, the amount of time that they've been playing together. And the last thing that we need is to take like a really good guy like Capo Caco, who the team loves, and just ship him off somewhere else and bring someone new in. So I don't think that trading anyone or sending anyone down to the AHL right now is a smart decision whatsoever. I think we kind of just got to work with what we got. Ryan Reeves was a tough loss, but it's kind of what needed to happen. It's what he wanted. It was best for the team because we cleared some cap space. But when it comes to trading other people away and just really kind of rebuilding this team, no. The answer is definitely no. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think it is too soon. We need to at least get through probably 2022. Once we get into the second half of this year, 2023, maybe we could start to have some discussions. But I think that the Rangers need to work with what they have and just try and figure out how to improve upon what they have. Keep testing different lines. They've found some line combinations that seem to work, and then they move away from them. I am personally of the belief that, you know, the captain here, Jacob Truba, is not the real issue. I think the issue right now is the fact that Gerard Gallant is kind of letting down his squad. That's where I'm starting to lean towards. And I think that's a discussion that we're going to have to have in an upcoming episode because I've seen quite a few people after recent losses on Twitter saying it's time to get that seat warmer on. It's time to fire this man. And I don't know if it's really time to do all that. It might be a little soon, but the discussion, I think, needs to start beginning. And so that's where I'm at here. But you know, when we talk about Jacob Trubo, we've talked about his performances, how we think that his performance has affected other people. But let's talk about the Rangers' decision to go with one captain rather than having the alternates. So what are your thoughts on that? Do you think in, in retrospect, maybe they should have just stuck with what was working for them the past few years? Or do you think that Jacob Trubo could potentially be the guy to pull them out of the funk that they're in and be that team captain to really right the ship? I mean, I definitely think that having one captain, having a guy with the C on his jersey is a smarter decision than having six rotating alternates because, you know, not all six of those guys that were in the A every single game, it would switch between multiple different players night in and night out. So you really do need one guy to act as the leader on the team. <laughs> now, Jacob Truba wearing the C is one that going into this video discussing whether we think he's the right choice or not. I still, as I'm talking, don't know if I fully support him or not. Before we named him, you know, I always envisioned Chris Kreider or Mika Zibanejad to be the captain. I think those were the two obvious answers for the pro like the vacancy right there. But um, we have no official confirmation from it. But there, we do speculate that Chris Kreider was chosen and he didn't want it, which kind of makes sense. But, you know, if he didn't want it, I personally would have gone with Zibanejad. I think he's been on the team for pretty much the longest besides Kreider. And who knows what happens there. So Jacob Truba got it. Can't go back into the past and change any of that. I think he has great leadership qualities. I know last night he had a big fight against the captain of Ottawa, who I hate. I won't even say his name. <laughs> but it was like a big showing. You know, he's a big hitter. He likes to defend his guys. But then he also has moments where when we were playing against Edmonton, Leon Dreisaitl just smacked a stick out of his hand. And Truba just kind of just like went like that and just ate that. It's like you can't just be – captain half the time if you're going to be a captain and stand up for your boys you got to do it 100 percent of the time so i'm really 50 50 on jacob truba's captaincy so far he has these moments where he acts as a really nice leader and then he has moments where he kind of just sits back and acts like he doesn't care i think that's completely valid those are valid criticisms to make i mean saying that you know his leadership looks inconsistent i think that's a good way to put it because that there are times where he's ready to go out there kick some ass for his squad, but there's other times where he seems a little bit more laid back and ready to kind of retreat off of the uh, the attack from the physical attack that would mm -hmm. be of another player and just kind of let things play out. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's an interesting discussion to be had. So I'm curious to hear any thoughts down below in the comment section. What is everyone viewing this episode? What are your thoughts on Jacob Truba's captaincy so far? Uh, hindsight's 2020. Is it too soon to make a decision to say whether or not it was a good choice? I personally think it might be a little bit too soon. But, you know, when we're kind of looking at it, 
the alternate captains were working for the Rangers in the past few true. years. And I think, you know, it could be one of those things that you say in retrospect, if it wasn't broke, you shouldn't have tried to fix it. Yeah. But I will add on to that. Um, you look back, we just had a little bit of a losing streak. Then we got one win. Now we're back in the losing column. The one win we had against Ottawa two nights ago, before that game started, Jacob Truba did hold a players only meeting in the locker room and who knows what was said during that meeting. We're not players, but whatever he said, it worked because we came out and we had like a dominant three to one win. And then the next game where he doesn't act as a leader, we lose again. So it kind of seems like when he does step up into that captaincy role and stand up for his guys and help them out, there is good things that come out of it. And then when he doesn't, it's just another loss. So it's really just up to him to consistently be that leader that we need. And then I fully will have faith in this team once again. Yeah, I, I think I'm in the same boat, man. It's just about being a little bit more consistent and seeing Truba really step up to the plate a little bit more frequently. And of course, we are not players. As you mentioned, we are not on the ice sharing the ice time with Jacob Truba and we're not in the locker room with him. So we don't necessarily know all the inner workings of his captaincy. But from the outside, so. from the outside looking in, uh, it's definitely an interesting discussion to be had. It's really more, should the Rangers have gone with a captain or should they have just stuck with the six alternates that they've had in the past? And I think that's really the main question to answer here. And I'm probably leaning towards, and if it wasn't broke, he shouldn't have fixed it. And they should have just stuck, stuck with the alternates. But really curious to hear everyone's thoughts on that topic down below in the comment section. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode and subscribe to the channel if you are new and ring the bell so you don't miss an episode of Fireside Rangers. We'll catch you all on the next one. Have a good one. And let's go Rangers. He shoots, he's got it! He's got it!